Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video. Welcome to another tutorial about Vala and GTK. In the previous lesson, we learned how to create a GTK stack switcher in our header bar that it actually works kind of like the buttons are reactive, but nothing changes here. What we have to do right now, we need to attach the GTK stack that we created with our two outstanding and completed pages inside the main window. This episode is brought to you by SkySilk. If you're looking for a powerful, reliable, and affordable VPS in the cloud, skyseal.com is the answer for you. Look no further for amazing, powerful cloud computing machine starting as low as $1 per month. Click the link in the description below to learn more. If we take a look at the header bar.vala file, how we did it, it doesn't really work properly and it, it's kind of tricky because we have two different files. We have one header bar file for the header bar and the F and then the window file for the actual main window. So what we need to do, we need to move the GTK stack inside the window and then reference that stack from the header bar in order to attach it to the stack switcher. So let's rework our code a little bit. Let's access the window.vala here and we can actually delete the title because we're not gonna use it anymore. And here before the declaration of the header bar, before the initialization of the header bar, we can basically copy paste what we did in this section in the header bar, we can cut the stack and generate the stack here. And then in the stack, we can cut all the generation of the pages with those GTK grids, and we can attach them right after the declaration of the stack. That's perfect. Let's indent this properly. Okay, now we have a stack, GTK stack created with a stack variable. We have the two pages. We are adding these two pages with the names and so on to this actual stack. Now we can attach to the GTK application window this actual stack. So we can simply say add stack. And just to be sure that it's properly visible, we can set the expand option to true, we can save this. And in the header bar now, we don't have any more the stack. So just for now, let's uh, comment these out and we're gonna see later how we can access it. But let's access our terminal and let's inside our build folder, let's type Ninja once again to compile everything and let's trigger Jarvis once again. So now we have this outstanding page text, which is the label of our page that is in the actual window because we attached the stack. If we access the the uh, GTK inspector and we zoom in a little bit and we select this actual page and in the page we select the three view. We can see that here we have the GTK stack with the grid. Inside the grid we have the outstanding label and then we have another grid with the completed page. So our stack it's there but of course we don't have a stack switcher to manage it. That's where the header bar thingy uh, come into place. But how do we connect the GTK stack that is in our window to the stack switcher that it's in our header bar. We can simply pass that specific widget during the generation of the header bar because we know that we're gonna reference that. So let's close this, let's access back our code editor. And in the window, when we generate our new Jarvis header bar, here we can pass the stack if we want. And this is one of the many options. We're gonna see throughout this series uh, many other approaches, but for now we're gonna tackle just two different approaches on how to solve this problem. So the first one is just, we pass the stack and in the header bar, we need to create a public constructor in order to allow the setup of that specific object. So we can write public header bar and this public header bar needs to have a GTK stack widget on creation. And this GTK stack widget will save the object itself called window stack that it sets the stack itself. And here, if we wanna be more readable, we can go on a dedicated line if we want. But so yeah, basically what we're doing here, we're doing exactly what we did in the window where we needed to pass the application here. We are setting a specific attribute with the application, what we're expecting to receive on the generation of our uh, specific class. Here, we don't have though a property of the window stack differently from uh, the GDK window, the GDK application window 
window where an application option, application attribute property is already available. In the header bar, we don't have a property called window stack. In fact, if we try to compile this with our terminal, type ninja, we're gonna have an error because the property window stack is not found in the header bar. That's where we can declare our own custom properties. So here we can declare a custom property that because we are declaring in the construct needs to be public and we need to specify that can be generated and can be set in the construct. So we can say that this header bar has an attribute that needs to be a GTK stack called the window stack. And we need to set, because it's a custom attribute, we need to specify when and where these attributes can be accessible. So we already said that this is a public attribute of this class, but we need to specify if it's a settable attribute, as a setter, as a getter, and if it can be generated, can be defined in the constructor. In our case, yes, it needs to be generated in the constructor because this is the public constructor class of the header bar. So we need to specify that this window stack can be get or can be accessed as a getter, so it can be tapped by another class, but also needs to be generated in the construct. So now that we have these, we can update, oh, let's copy the window stack, we can update the stack switcher here that we comment this out before, and we can say that the stack that is controlled by the stack switcher is gonna be the window stack that we're passing on generation of the header bar coming from the windows itself. Does it make sense? Let's give it a try. Ninja, no error messages, fantastic. Let's trigger our Jervis. Perfect, we have our outstanding page. If we click completed, look at that. It changed, outstanding, completed, outstanding, completed, outstanding, completed. Fantastic, we just generated our first GTK stack and we connected a widget from a class to another by passing it dynamically and declaring a new public attribute. This implementation is fine, but as you can see here, it's kind of limited, especially if the header bar changes something and wants to tap the window, the window itself. Passing just the stack doesn't really make sense, so why don't we pass the entire window and then we tap the stack itself that is publicly accessible in the window. So for example, here, instead of passing the stack, we want to pass this. So we're passing these instance of the Jarvis window. Here we need to change something. We can replace these to something like main window. And here we need to declare that we are expecting a Jarvis window that it's gonna be called window, something like that. And we can replace the stack window. And here we need to update. So a public main window that it's actually a Jarvis window has to be here. So now that we have our own main window, we need to, instead of uh, attaching the stack to the window stack that we don't have, we need to tap the stack inside the main window. So we can write main window dot stack. But we're gonna have an error because this stack is not a publicly accessible attribute of the main window. In fact, if we try to compile these, we're gonna have an error. The name stack does not exist in the context of the Jarvis window. Also in this case, we need to declare a custom attribute. So in the window, we can declare a publicly accessible GTK stack called simply stack. And this one needs to be able to be get and set by the application, but not declaring the public constructor. So we don't need this to be accessible in the public constructor. Now that we declare this stack as a public attribute of this class, we can avoid to actually declare the variable because these stack attribute is already there. If we write variable, we're gonna have an error because we're trying to overwrite something that is already clear, it's not a generic variable, but it's just it's an actual GTK stack, so this will work. And now that we declare this way, this stack attribute is publicly accessible by passing the window to other GTK classes. So let's give it a try. Let's type ninja, no errors, perfect. Let's trigger Jarvis. 
and it works. Same exact result, but with two different approaches. So that's pretty much it for this video. I suggest you to experiment with the declaration of custom attributes and passing an attribute or a widget or a specific class to another class in order to tap those publicly accessible attributes. And also experiment by changing the getters and setters and changing the construct or not allowing to uh, get this attribute, just putting the setter or putting as a private attribute and see how your Vala application reacts to these changes. So that's pretty much it for this lesson. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And until the next one, as usual, happy coding.